Hello and welcome to another sneaker video. This one is on most if not all of the shoes that I purchased during the first half of 2016 and I tried to include the model numbers and colorways as they're listed on the box so you can do your own research if you're interested in the shoes. First up it is the Adidas Forum and the Forum was originally released in 1984 as a basketball shoe and this retro is it's nice it's comfortable it's relatively tall for a basketball shoe especially compared to today's shoes as you can see that big collar there a simple white and black upper with the traditional strap in white for a tighter fit which i never use and i love a lot of 80s basketball shoes from adidas so the forum the attitude rivalry and the rest of them and I would definitely recommend going up half a size in these and especially if you find a vintage pair I would suggest going up half a size to a full size. Next up it's the Adidas Stan Smith CF and the Stan Smith was born in the 60s but was endorsed by a French tennis player named Robert Haylett first and so that bore his name the Robert Haylett but after he retired Adidas looked for another tennis player and they approached Stan Smith and he said yes and of course the rest is history and that was back in 1971 and the Stan Smith has been popular ever since and this ver this version features the uh, three velcro straps instead of laces and you don't see it very often and in my opinion it's better with laces I mean you can use a velcro to tighten it up but it kind of looks a little weird but it's still a nice shoe. Next up it's the A6 Gel Light 3 in Champagne and this is a women's colorway but I don't care I really like them and the Gel Light 3 was originally introduced as a running shoe in 1990 and it's still fairly popular these days it's not used as a running shoe anymore, it's more of a casual shoe, but it still has the original split tongue, which is actually very comfortable, and it has that gel cushioning, which is also very comfortable. So I have a video on A6 Gel Light 3s if you want uh, a different review, a little more in-depth review on these shoes, but I like the colorway here, it's got a lot of pop. Next up it's the Converse Chuck Taylor High in Mediterranean Blue I think but it's just listed as Mediterranean and the Converse Rubber Shoe Company designed the All-Star in 1917 and in 1921 basketball player Charles Chuck Taylor joined the Converse team known as the Converse All-Stars and he was a salesman for the company and he also held basketball clinics at high schools around the country and the models change very little over the decades and usually features a rubber sole, canvas upper, and rubber toe cap, which is exactly what this has. And this Mediterranean blue, or kind of a turquoise version, is one I really, really wanted. And up next, it's the Diodora My Basket in white and blue Corsair. And this basketball sneaker was originally designed in 1984 for the Milan basketball team in Italy and Diodora is an Italian company known best these days for a lot of its retro style running shoes and a lot of collaborations and stuff like that. Uh, I was happy they retroed this basketball classic. It's a very simple design with a nice leather upper and rubber sole and in terms of comfort and fit I would say they're similar to Nike Air Force Ones. Next up, it's the Ewing Athletics 33 High, and Patrick Ewing launched his own sneaker company, Ewing Athletics, in 1989, and he wore the 33 High during the 1990 season, and it became a bestseller for the brand. And if you didn't know, because I didn't know, I don't really know much about basketball, number 33 was his jersey number for much of his career with the New York Knicks, and this is one of the original colorways, the New York Nick's colorway and it's one of my favorites. I also like the turquoise one and the all-white one and it's a very 
chunky and well padded shoe, especially around the tongue and the collar. So I recommend going up half a size. Next it's the Fila Bubbles. And like the name suggests, the shoe features four bubbles in the midsole, one for each letter of Fila, F-I-L-A. And the model came out in 1997 as a basketball shoe. And like many of Fila models before it, well, it has a unique silhouette and it's a bit bulky looking, but that's pretty typical of basketball shoes for the 90s. And I love the look and recommend going up half a size for actually all Fila's out there if you're interested in Fila's. I purchased a couple in my normal size and I had to return them and go half a size up. And it's always been very comfortable when I go half a size up. These unfortunately are pretty rare. They sold out pretty quickly so you're going to pay a little more than you'd like to possibly for a pair. The next shoe is the Fila Stack 2 or Stack Mid and it came out in 1996 and was Philadelphia 76ers player Jerry Stack has his second signature shoe. Like the bubble, Stack 2 has a bulky 90s design and while it lacks breathability, like many basketball shoes of that era, I really love the materials, I love the look of the shoe. Again, definitely go up half a size. This is one of the shoes that I got in my normal size and then had to return it. Next up is the K-Swiss Lausanne 3, Lausanne 3, I'm not sure which one it is. And this shoe released in the 90s as a tennis shoe and I think it's been considered mostly a casual shoe since then. I don't know if you remember, they came out with a tongue twister model in the 2000s, early 2000s, where you could twist the tongue around so it was one color on one side and another color on the other. And here we have a very simple design, similar to the Stan Smith. Very classic design. It's got a nice uh, white leather upper with gold accents, and I know they had a white and silver version too. Also has a gum sole. Very nice. Next up, it's the New Balance 530. And this 90s running shoe from New Balance has been releasing in a multitude of colorways over the years, especially now. And this one's from 2015. It's a women's colorway in pink and gray, or gray and pink. And I really like the silhouette of the 530. I don't know what it is, it's just the lines. I really like it and I saw this colorway and I really wanted it because I like the pink. And you can still use it as a running shoe, though I'd go up half a size if you were to do that. I got these in my normal size and they're a little snug, so I wish I'd gone half a size up, but it's not bad. Next up is the Nike Air Force One High 07, and the Nike Air Force One came out in 1982 and was named after the Air Force One plane that carries the US President, and it became a classic over the years and it's one of the most recognizable sneakers out there and it's been released in something like 2000 variations and this model features a gym red perforated leather upper with white accents and it's part of the 2016 pivot collection I believe and has a unique logo on the heel and like most Air Force ones I would go down half a size Next up, we have the Nike Air Force One BTSP Tishi for Ricardo Tishi. He's uh, the guy who collaborated with Nike on these. He's a designer. And these dropped in 2014, and they came out in low, mid, high, and knee-high boot models, and in three colorways, white, tan, and black. And this is the tan model. And they're a bit tricky to put on because you have such long laces going up the shaft of the boot. But I love the materials and I love the look. And it's, of course, another women's model, but whatever. And again, definitely consider going down half a size. Next up, we have the Nike Air Max 90. This is a classic shoe from 1990 and was one of the first to feature a visible air unit. There were a few others before it, 
And today it's still a very popular shoe and it's been released in a multitude of colorways and materials and I love all white sneakers and that's exactly what this is here and it goes with just about everything and anything and they're they're decently comfortable the one issue I have with Air Max 90 midsoles is that they tend to yellow rather quickly so uh, buyer beware and now we have the Air Jordan 6 maroon and I knew I wanted these the minute I saw them. I love the colorway. It's an off-white, kind of a cream with maroon hints. And unfortunately, they didn't release my size in the U.S., which is a problem I've had with all brands recently. But I found a European seller, and, but, you know, of course, I have to pay the reseller prices. And I had a pair sent to me, but I don't know if they were stolen off my front porch or what happened. I never got them. So that was money down the drain. But I did find another pair, luckily, and this is them here. And the Air Jordan 6 came out in 1991, and this is one of the original colorways. Just a beautiful shoe in my opinion, and it's part of the remastered series, so it features the original stitched Nike Air branding on the heel. Next up, it's the Air Jordan 7 Hair, and this is the 2015 release. And just as the Air Jordan 6 was the sixth signature uh, Michael Jordan sneaker, uh, the Air Jordan 7 here was his seventh and released in 1992 and it was the first Jordan to feature a neoprene sock liner and had no visible air unit or Nike Air logo instead it featured Hirachi technology and that made it relatively light and this model known as the hair got its name from a commercial starring Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny and I guess they've been friends for a long time now going like 30 years or something like that something silly Next up, it's the Air Jordan 14 Low Phantom, and the Air Jordan 14 came out in 1998, and as you guessed it, is the 14th shoe in the Jordan Signature line. This is a women's colorway, and it didn't receive a lot of attention, so I was able to get them for a pretty decent price. The 14 was inspired by the Ferrari 550M, as can be seen from the Jumpman badge, which resembles the Ferrari crest and the tire inspired heel and the grill inspired midsoles and i really like the sleek design of the low compared to the mids and the colors are they're pretty nice i like them they go with a lot of fall and winter stuff next up is the nike cortez forest gump or the forest gump colorway because this is the colorway that appeared in the movie and the original cortez was designed by a running coach and blue ribbon sports company co-founder bill bowerman in the 60s it was officially released as the Nike Cortez in time for the 1972 Olympics after Blue Ribbon Sports had officially become Nike in 1971. Now Bowerman and Nike co-founder Phil Knight originally wanted to name the shoe the Aztec after the 1968 Olympics to be held in Mexico City, but Adidas already had a shoe with a similar name, the Azteca Gold, so instead they decided to go with the name of the man who defeated the Aztecs, Hernan Cortez. Here we have the Puma Suede, and the Puma Suede is another classic sneaker, very simple. It was originally released in 1968 and features, as you guess, a suede upper, which was kind of a departure from a lot of canvas and leather shoes of the day. This is a mint green, I think it's listed as holiday mint, or just holiday. It is a women's colorway, but it's pretty unisex, the shoe itself is very unisex. This used to be a basketball shoe back in the day, but now, of course, it's more of a casual shoe, more of a walking shoe. Next, it's the Reebok Freestyle Pump, and this is a collaboration with Vila. It's in gold and white, as you can see, and the Freestyle Aerobic sneaker really put Reebok on the map in 1982, and the pump propelled Reebok into the 90s, so in 2016, the two were finally joined together. I know Reebok started putting a lot of pumps on a lot of models in 2016. And this one being kind of a weird combination, but I do like what they did. Unfortunately, a lot of other retro pumps out there don't necessarily work very well. Not as well as the originals, unfortunately. And yes, this is a women's release. Of course, the freestyle is a women's shoe, but I really like them. And that's that. Next, it's the Reebok Pump Omnizone, 
and the 1990 Omnizone was one of the first pump designs and featured the energy return system in the heel, which would soon be replaced by Hexalite in later Reebok models. This is not an original colorway, but I love how the blues and orange look against the white, and so I had to have these, and I don't recall seeing these uh, in any retail stores here in the US, and uh, luckily I was able to find two pairs from an eBay seller based in the UK. The design is so 90s even without the pump, and it's a relatively cheap model to pick up these days, and I really wish Reebok would continue to release its old school 90s models. Next up, it's the Saucony Courageous, and Saucony has quite an interesting history, its parent company being founded in Pennsylvania in 1898, and it built up the Saucony brand and eventually adopted it, seeing how the shoes could hold their own. And the Courageous was born in the mid-80s as a running shoe, and while there's newer technology out there, these shoes are seriously not bad at all. And I've always found Saucony shoes to be very comfortable. And the gray suede upper is also very nice. The price tag wasn't too bad either. This shoe is part of the 2015 Courageous Premium Pack. The word Saucony comes from a Native American word for where two rivers run together. The Saucony logo represents a river with three boulders in it. Finally, we have the Vans Skate High LX. And the Van Doren brothers founded Vans in 1966. And by 1976, the year the Skate High was introduced, the company had established a following in the skate and surf worlds, and earlier models had lacked ankle protection for skaters, which the Skate High fixed, and that's how it got its name, with the yeah, SK8 for skate and then high for high top. And the LX version was my first pair of Vans, and it's made of a very nice white leather that comes with both white and black laces. And while I find these to be, well, I found them to be rather uncomfortable at first, they grew on me and they're not so bad now. Well, if I wear socks, comfortable socks. So I'd like to try other colorways of the Skate High model. So that's it for the first half of 2016. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Subscribe and have a great day.